So I recently read Tiago Forte's Building a Second Brain, and I think that book has a really great explanation of the para method and the code method, and you should check it out if you're curious about those two things. But should you be using para within your Obsidian Bowl? Let's dig into that in today's video. So I think the para system is good and has merit, more on that in a bit, but I don't think it's a good fit for Obsidian or other modern graph PKM systems just because it's not flat enough. In Para, a file can really only be in one folder at a given time, and I think that makes a lot of sense in traditional file systems, but it limits one of the main benefits of Obsidian, which is that your structure emerges as you use and reference your notes. To force a traditional file structure here is just limiting the upside of the system and honestly creating unnecessary maintenance as you feel the need to move a file around from one folder to another. One thing I do use from the para method is having a projects folder and enumerating those folders there at the top of Obsidian. This helps me to keep focus on what I should be working on instead of just meandering around my garden. Don't get me wrong, I still do plenty of that, but I'm trying to have more intention when I'm working in the garden. On to areas, I could totally see tagging or backlinking your areas so that you can you create a dashboard or a data view to keep tabs on them. But in my case, I've operationalized my areas within my task manager, within Occiflow, as that's where I'm gonna make sure that I've put the right things throughout my week to meet my expected standard. Moving on to resources, in my opinion, honestly, everything in your garden is a resource. So having a folder wrapping that's a little bit unnecessary. So I just remember that the root of my vault is effectively my resources folder. Moving on to archives, in my case, I don't have an archives folder because my goal is to have each of those projects make their way in something that gets delivered ideally through the garden on brandonkboswell.com. But if you're a big user of fleeting notes, I could see an archive being handy here where you don't want to see them in your typical vault, but you might want to get back to them in the future. So I've mentioned that I don't think that Para is a good fit for Obsidian, but that doesn't mean that it's not useful. For me, it's been amazing in organizing my Google Drive. I recently consolidated all of my document folders from my computer and all of my cloud services, and I feel way more organized than I ever have. I feel really good about Para for that particular use case. I also recently started using the Arc browser and I think it lends itself well to Para. I have different contexts, one for home, one for work, and one for YouTube, and they each have their own set of projects. I can also see areas and resources working really well here for those things you want to follow up on regularly and want to have quick access to. So if you're curious about the Arc browser and how I use it, let me know down in the comments and I can put together a video on that. Also, if you've implemented Para within your life, I'd love to hear about your experience and what's worked and what hasn't. Let me know down in the comments or feel free to DM or email me. Hey, thanks for sticking around. I recently did a video on how I've redesigned my iPhone to increase focus and minimize distractions. You should take a look.